Hello, Dr. Sudha from Government Science College, Autonomous, Bangalore. In this session, we are going to study isoperimetric problems. The learning objectives are the isoperimetric problems, the prerequisites, basic integration, Euler's equation, particular forms of Euler's equation. So let us begin with history. Isoperimetric problems consist in maximizing or minimizing a cost functional subject to integral constraints. They have found a broad class of important applications throughout the centuries. Areas of application include astronomy, physics, geometry, algebra and analysis. Study of isoperimetric problem is possible through a powerful tool known as Euler equation or Euler-Lagrange equation. To tell the story of the isoperimetric problem, one must begin by quoting Virgil, an ancient Roman poet. At last they landed where from far your eyes may view the torrents of new Carthage rise. They brought a space of ground which Baisa called from the bull's hide the first enclosed and bald. This is taken from the Latin literature, the epic Annoid. The isoperimetric problem is referred as the oldest problem in the calculus of variations. Queen Tito's problem, which we quoted in our session one, can be stated as follows. Find among all planar simple curves of fixed length, the one that encloses the maximum area. Or we can equivalently form the problem or quote the problem as find all planar simple closed curves enclosing a fixed area, the one with minimal length. As for the mathematics of the isoperimetric problem, the Greeks pretty much solved it by their standard when Genodus proved that a circle has greater area than any polygon with the same perimeter. His work was lost. We now of it mainly through Pappus and Theon of Alexandria. Pappus's introduction to the subject is considered a literary masterpiece. Geonodus proved that a circle has greater area than any polygon with the same perimeter. For regular polygons with the same perimeter, more sides imply greater area. Any figure with maximal area must be a circle. Now let us define the isoperimetric problem. Finding a closed curve of given perimeter and which encloses maximum area is called isoperimetric problem. The statement of the isoperimetric problem goes like this. To find extremals of functional i is equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x comma y comma y dash dx under the conditions y of x1 is equal to y1 and y of x2 is equal to y2 subject to the condition j is equal to integral x1 to x2 g of x comma y comma y dash dx is equal to k where g of x comma y comma y dash is the given function and k is a constant. So the isoperimetric problems are usually solved by the method of Lagrange's multipliers. We form h a new function which is equal to f plus lambda g where lambda is the Lagrange's multiplier then consider integral x1 to x2 h dx and apply Euler's equation for h to be an extremum that is h is an minimum or maximum. So let us solve some problems. Find the extremal of the functional integral 0 to 1 x square plus y dash square dx given that integral y dx is equal to 2 with y of 0 is equal to 0 and y of 1 is equal to 1. The solution is as follows. Given i is equal to integral 
0 to 1 x square plus y dash square dx and j is equal to integral 0 to 1 y dx is equal to 2 wherein f is equal to x square plus y dash square and g is equal to y. We can form the new function h is equal to f plus lambda g and that gives us x square plus y dash square plus lambda y. For h to be an extremum, it must satisfy the Euler's equation dou h by dou y minus d by dx of dou h by dou y dash equal to 0. So when we substitute for dou h by dou y and dou h by dou y dash, we get lambda minus d by dx of 2y dash is equal to 0. Now the derivative of 2y dash with respect to x gives us 2y double dash equal to 0. Let us write the expression as 2y double dash is equal to lambda. To get the value of y now, we need to integrate twice. On integrating twice, we get y is equal to half lambda x square by 2 plus cx plus k if both c and k are constants of integration and this is the required extremum. But to find the constant c and k as well as the Lagrange's multiplier lambda, we need to use the given conditions. The first condition given is y of 0 is equal to 0. That is when x is equal to 0, y takes the value 0. Substituting those values in this expression, we get k is equal to 0. Because y is 0, x is 0 so the first term on the right hand side is 0 and cx is also 0 because x is equal to 0 we get k equal to 0. Let us put this value of k in the expression for y and we get y is equal to 1 by 2 lambda x square by 2 plus cx. Let us call this as expression 1. Now let us use the other condition given that is y of 1 is equal to 1. That is when x is equal to 1 y takes the value 1. Let us put this value now and we get 1 is equal to lambda by 4 plus c. Let us call this as expression 2. And one more condition is given that is integral 0 to 1 y dx is equal to 2. Here let us put the value of y and integrate. So value of y is lambda into x square by 4 plus cx into dx is equal to 2. Now let us integrate x square. When we integrate x square, we get x cube by 3. 3 into 4 gives us 12. So lambda into x cube by 12. Plus c into x. The integral of x is x square by 2. So c into x square by 2 between the limits 0 to 1. When we apply the limits, the upper limit is 1. So we get lambda into 1 by 12 plus c into 1 by 2. Whereas the lower limit is 0, both the terms take the value 0. Therefore, we get lambda into 1 by 12 plus c into 1 by 2 equal to 2. Let us simplify this by taking 2 1 by 2 common and cross multiplying it. We get lambda by 6 plus c is equal to 4. Let us call this as expression 3. Now let us make use of expression 2 and 3 both in lambda and c. When we solve that, we get lambda is equal to minus 36. Put this value of lambda in one of the equations, that is in equation 2, we get c is equal to 10. Now we have k is equal to 0, lambda is equal to minus 36 and c is equal to 10. Let us put these values in the expression of y and we get y is equal to minus 9x square plus 10x, that is the required extremal. Now let us go to one more problem. Show that the extremal of the functional integral 0 to 1 y dash square dx subjected to the constraint 0 to 1 uh, y dx is equal to 1 is a parabolic arc. So we need to find the extremal and show that it represents a parabolic arc. That is the final expression what we get represents a parabola. So let us uh, take the given conditions that is i is equal to integral 0 to 1 y dash square dx and j is equal to integral 0 to 1 y dx is equal to 1. So f is y dash square and g is y. Let us form the new function h. h is equal to f plus lambda g that is y dash square plus lambda y. For x, h to be an extremum it must satisfy the Euler equation dou h by dou y minus d by dx of dou h by dou y dash equal to 0.
Here we can see that the expression for H which is independent of X. So now let us consider the expression for Euler's equation when the function H is independent of X. So we get H minus Y dash into dou H by dou Y dash is equal to C where C is a constant. Let us substitute for H and dou H by dou Y dash. We get lambda uh, that is uh, Y dash square plus lambda Y minus uh, Y dash into 2 Y dash equal to C. So we get Y dash square minus 2 Y dash square that gives us minus Y dash square plus lambda Y is equal to C. So when we solve for Y dash we get root of lambda Y minus C but y dash is dy by dx. So we get dy by dx is equal to root of lambda y minus c. Now let us separate the variables and we get dy by root of lambda y minus c is equal to dx. Let us integrate now to find y. So integral dy by root of lambda y minus c is equal to integral dx plus k. So this uh, integral on the left hand side is similar to integral dx by root x. So we get uh, 2 root x but here we need to see that the coefficient of y is lambda therefore the integral will be 2 root of lambda y minus c divided by lambda and on the right hand side integral dx gives us x. So we get 2 by lambda root of lambda y minus c is equal to x plus k on integration. Now let us uh, square both sides. When we square both sides we get 4 by lambda square into lambda y minus c is equal to x plus k whole square. Within the brackets when we remove lambda it gets, it gets cancelled with 1 lambda and we get 4 by lambda y minus c by lambda is equal to x plus k whole square. When we observe this expression it is quadratic in x and linear in y, hence it represents a parabola. 